Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we begin with the launch of the Dionysus 1 again, this time with Sebastian Serrano, and we are going to see if we can finally complete the crewed orbit program by getting the last little bit of science. So let us launch. So that's what Sebastian looks like, we haven't seen him before, but there he is, and hopefully our danger mitigation techniques will keep him safe. We'll find out. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. We have eight engines, and go. Earth photography is all we need. We're past the speed of sound. No, oh, oh, parachute is overheating. We don't need to pitch up a little bit more here. And let me cut off the boosters and separate those. G forces were being a little bit high anyway. Well, Earth photography. Let's just get ready. Oh, we should have cut those. Oops. A little too much thrust there. Okay, onward. I mean, we could probably send Sebastian to the moon. Let's just not bring him back safely. Okay, and shut down. We have orbit 296 by 251. A little bit less than the transfer for the moon, but then we have enough with the service module, but then again, we don't have enough supplies or, again, heat tolerance or a whole bunch of other things. So anyway, we are going to separate. Okay, the orbit. fuel cell. And the science is running. Six hours. Well, I've collected your photography. Well, I guess we'll bring, we have to bring it back manually this time. As opposed to transmitting. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, that's consistent with other forms of photography. Um... Kuru's in the dark. We'll try and splash down the Pacific this time. Otherwise, very similar parameters to not rock the boat on that. It better give me my 100% when I get back though. Okay, mission. Okay, separation of the service module. We are in the atmosphere. Okay, looking better this time. Uh, it really is just the fact that the pod is uh, just a little bit larger than it seems, and that causes a problem. That's why they put a bleeder on it in the first place. Um, then why I made the additional heat shield just a little bit bigger. This time I made it even bigger than that. And now it's working out. High G-forces with this one. Sebastian can take it though. I don't know if the bonus he gives will apply to collected science or whether it's only transmitted science. Yep, no problems this time. And we're right here, somewhat off the coast of South America. Okay, there's initial parachute deployment. And we're good. And... Rec uh, recover. Normal recovery. 
Let's see about that science. It seemed like a lot of science. It says 40. I, yeah, I don't know if there's some sort of scientific benefit, for, uh, a scientist benefit from that. I think we just got the 40. I don't know how the scientists work exactly. Anyway, 4,000. Maybe they only work in the science lab. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, so, well, in that case, we have finally gotten all this stuff done. We could get that extra bit, but the crude lunar exploration will pay more, and we might as well get that started. So, all right. Got all these uh, reputation points that we ought to spend on something. Okay, so we are going to pick this up. We can't go fast because I haven't gotten that much confidence. But we'll try to do it cheap. <laughs> so, I mean, we've got a lot of elements already unlocked, right? We really need a pad and a larger launcher, and then maybe we can do the thing. Let's see. And we'll soon be completing the small bodies one, hopefully. Without having gotten even a small fraction of the total funds. And then we can move on to Jupiter. Jupiter actually pays less, doesn't it? There's it 320,000 each year. By set program speed to fast. I won't be able to do that for the Jupiter one. Plutonian landings, seriously. Okay, well, I guess we'll go for the multi-hundred-watt RTGs. After all, there's so many outer planets things to do, so many programs focused on the outer planets, that we might as well. It'll probably be worthwhile. And we have 77.5 left, which probably isn't enough to do anything with. I am thinking about the volcane situation, the fact that we don't have a volcano right now. And I'm wondering if maybe it would be okay to adopt the J2S and just pretend it's the volcano Because it's pretty close. I mean, I could bring in my own volcano model. Anyway, if we take a look at it, um, it's got 323 sea level 436 vacuum, which is actually a little bit worse than the volcano, maybe, especially at the sea level. It does have throttling, which is interesting. And three ignitions. But overall, I feel like it's about the same idea. The cost is going to be tremendous, but probably for the volcano it'd be the same way. So I'll think about that, or maybe we'll just bring in... I'll just bring in the volcano that I made and configure it the same way as far as the pricing is concerned and the tech is concerned as the J2. In that case we'd want to go up the Hydrolox line and but we still don't have enough science for that. We'll have to wait until the series Vesta and maybe Jupiter fly by. Those things are still popping up in here. Hmm, interesting. I eagerly await the space station program and also the space plane program again we have we have space plane development here but we don't have the program in the admin building so it doesn't do us any good that does leave us with a lot of stuff that is in the outer solar system so good thing we're getting those rtgs now we've picked up the crude lunar landing program and of course that obligates us to do something about it so we need a bigger rocket and I've decided to cook this up uh, this is not anything like a Saturn V it's only 1,200 come on Stater 1,283 tons but that's still way above our pad capacity and the way it's set up it hopefully will be able to bring 30 tons to orbit that's what we have up there and this stage is a balloon tank. So, I mean, we have a lot of unlock credit. We don't have a lot of money. We have a lot of unlock credit. So we might as well unlock the balloon tanks and tool the balloon tanks, which is very expensive. That's the most expensive thing going on here. 101,000 to tool it. And they'll be pretty expensive in general, but 
hopefully it'll be worth it. Um, we have HM7 engines. Uh, we will have to unlock those, but again, lots of unlock credit. Uh, they're 50,000 to unlock, yeah, I think. Yep, it's back there. And they're just going to fire once. They only can fire once. Uh, but the goal here is this is actually uh, getting to orbit stage, not transfer stage. And it'll be fairly efficient for that. It's not a short burn time though, right? Because these are not powerful engines. It's eight minutes and 27 seconds. So this is very, very much like an Ariane 5 in a way yeah, with that long burn time. Uh, so we have the booster phase and then the Hydrolox long getting to orbit phase, more or less, but it's just not the same setup. We have all this liquid stuff going on and it's toxic liquids. UH-25, and these are all the Vulcane, oh sorry, a Viking FB, sorry, but Viking 5B, Viking 5B, and we have six boosters and a core, and it's all the same diameter that we've had before, so nothing has changed as far as that's concerned, but we now have a 1,300 ton core there, and so that's the other thing that we have to tool, obviously. So it's not too bad considering its capacity. Uh, this is still use this is actually using the core that used to be on the upper stage Viking, upper Viking stage. How about that? There was no point making the core here. One of those, you know, putting four of these Viking four or four Bs on the core because we'd have to widen the core first of all, and actually widening the core, it would go over the burn time too easily. We'd have to make it stout, and then the boosters wouldn't look right, and so it's all complicated. Um, the Viking 4-4B is a bad match for the burn time of the Viking 5-6, because these have 3 minutes and 25 seconds, so you always end up with the boosters outlasting the core if you put that on. And so we just have the Viking 5-5Bs on the core as well, even though they're not very efficient for... Uh, vacuum and we could easily air light them. I mean we could air light the the vacuum ones if we were choosing to use those. Anyway so it reads 9,220 meters per second with the 30 ton payload and you know maybe that'll be good uh, maybe that will not be enough but with our engines being what they are and the fact that I'm sticking with them <laughs> which is a choice, um, we can't do a whole lot more. We have 28 engines here, and in order to mitigate the thrust weight ratio, by the way, we we're going to turn off half of them. I've got that action grouped already. So yeah, basically I didn't see a way of getting around this unless we have a lot more engines lighting at the start, and right now we have 28. I don't want to pass the N1 limit here. So um, we are going to tool things. We got unlock the balloon tank, tool the balloon tank. Let, let's just do the unlock manually. Unlock the HM7. Those will be more reliable. Not too much better better, but more reliable and more expensive. But we don't have the technology yet. But if we... as I, I am speculating that we'll be climbing up the Hydrolox ladder once we get the science, so uh, we will work on those. And so we've unlocked that. And finally, balloon tanks. Okay. And now tooling. We have just enough. Tooling for all untooled parts will cost 144,772.5 and uh, we have unlock credit of 146,290. So there we have it. This is our launcher, and now we are going to work on a new launch site, which we don't have money for. ELA-6, hopefully the new program will help pay for it. We'll go with 1,400 as the maximum tonnage. I, I, I don't know, I don't think we're going to do too much more than this. Maybe 1,300. And it has to be human rated. 525,000. 725 daily. 
Okay. And hopefully I'll have all these resources. It doesn't need the app gas. Actually, you know what? That's just a dummy payload. Let me take that off. It's not like it cuts down on the cost that much, though. Such hypergolic. Much UR700 feel. Okay. Build. One thing I've noticed is that the number up here for change in funds doesn't always sort of update correctly if you have previously been building something at a pad and you leave your staff there. Uh, it was sharply negative just now because we began the construction of ELA-6 and it was still sort of reading the people at the pad as if they were doing something even though they weren't. Um, everything is clear here. Uh, they had finished clearing up the pad and um, yeah, but I had to actually take them off the pad for it to actually reset those numbers. I hope it's doing the accounting properly and like I don't have to take everybody off the pad every time. Maybe I've lost like hundreds of thousands of funds because it's been counting them as working when it shouldn't have. I don't know. Hopefully it's been counting that properly. But yeah, I had to remove them. Of course, adding them now, it doesn't change that stuff up there as it I believe shouldn't uh, when they're not working but yep I mean I don't understand the whole business anyway normally when you hire people you have to continue paying them if you're gonna keep them on but apparently we get to pay them a very minimal salary unless they're actually doing something functional which is I don't know I'm not gonna argue with it but I'm just pointing out the weird number situation on change in funds up there and how it affects planning because originally it was very negative and so I was going to reduce the work rate in order to make sure it was positive. But then I figured to check my staff and see if we could do something about that. It turns out we can run the construction of ELA-6 at full speed and still have funds, which is important. I mean, of course, until we start actually building something. Okay, so we should probably be doing something while Pad 6 is being constructed or Launch Complex 6 is being constructed. And we do have a lunar flyby mission, a crewed lunar flyby mission, as part of our lunar, lunar landing program. And that gives us an opportunity to really stretch the capabilities of the KTS with our current, well, this is not really our current rocket, um, our current pad, let's say, our current launch complex. We will have to do some GSE upgrades, but what you see here is the three core version of the Denim rocket plus the Arcturus's upper stage, the 4 meter one that we've already tooled, uh, which is a balloon tank, plus our Centaurish stage or Griffin stage with the RZ-20s that we have tucked in there, uh, and then we have the pot. Uh, there is no service module. This stage is the service module. It's got to transfer us to the moon, and then that's it. I mean, it can relight, and it's got RCS, but the little fuel cells are up there now, and hopefully... Oh, I didn't take the configuration. I wanted uh, Apollo fuel cells, not uh, Gemini fuel cells. Okay, we've got both of them on Apollo. Okay, and maybe I should tuck the hydrolocks in there for the fuel cells, but presumably they can take it from this tank. We've got the MLI layers, but... Maybe there's too much boil off. We'll see how much boil off there is. We'll do this uncrewed first. There's a controller here. This controller is, oh, sorry, not down there. It's actually up here right now. Uh, this is a normal avionics unit. They'll consume quite a bit, 133 watts, but it was more convenient at this point since we already have it tooled and we don't have much money uh, instead of changing it to deep space. So yeah, we're going with that. And did I mess that up? No. Okay, good. Uh, and But we also have the pod zone controller up here, of course. And that's a 10-ton controller. And But that's really for the bitter end. Um, we'll see what we can do. I mean, if we can send us to the moon, that's one thing. If we can just get to a high orbit, we can at least test the heat shield out and get some science. After all, the science experiments that we have on here, like the space television broadcast and ion sensing altitude control, Thing, those aren't requiring the moon uh, in space high over the earth will be just fine so we could do those and that'll be a thing so 
It's sort of a test. We don't have enough money right now, but we have to do the GSE anyway, so I was introducing it. The Delta V is not exactly lunar capable. It's complicated. We've got 1.57 thrust to weight ratio, so that's good. That's all good. And then it's really bad with this stage. So, and then we would finish orbit and transfer with the Griffin stage. So, maybe it'd work out, maybe it won't. We do have the launch escape system to jettison and everything. We'll see. So, lots of question marks here to test. And let's upgrade our launch complex. Hopefully it's got everything. 14,000 just to renovate. Okay, the renovation is complete, but we need something like 41,000 for the rocket. And we can pick up the crewed lunar flyby contract. The Lunar Orbit 1 doesn't require the lunar flyby because Apollo 8 happened. Um, basically, we only need one crew member. No, let's not do that. But, yeah. Okay, let's just pick that up. Testing this uncrewed will also give us the opportunity to try out the new HM7 engines for the first time and get data units on those. We have none right now. And their current reliability is only 85%. So we would like to bump that up. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's an expenditure with multiple points. Okay, so just barely enough money. Uh, yes, that interstage ring for the adapter right here. I know it looks horrible with this extra bulbous tank here. I mean, as if that part wasn't bad enough, this part here too is iffy. And I don't know about the wisdom of not having the service module. We'll test that out, I guess. Obviously, this stage is much more efficient overall, but maybe a little service module will be nicer. It's about a thousand usually. I'll keep it like that. Okay, but we will be paying attention to our Dres 2, which is the Vesta mission. That's just, uh, I, I think that's the mid course adjustment for it. That's that five meter per second one that Mechjeb gave us. Okay, we have 50% on the transmission, 86% on the reception. So we have comms. How much worse is it likely to get? It's going to take a while to get there. Earth will be roughly here. So it's going to get worse. It's going to get a lot worse. Hmm. Was it telling the truth about how comms are going to be in the VAB? I'm not sure. I should check for an extra comm upgrade just in case. There is definitely an Earth encounter there. <laughs> Vesta escape is in 270 days, so that shouldn't bother us, but it's definitely there. I gotta try and do this as well as I can. Okay, we do have a Vesta encounter. It wanted within 20,000 kilometers, that's... Definitely like that. Okay. Yep. So. Sunlight seems fine. I, I was more worried about sunlight than comms, but... 20% wear, by the way. Maybe I'll just leave it in this orientation for now. I don't want to mess up the encounter. So, SY change alarm, and we'll catch up to it in 270 days, I guess. I guess we can check how much it would take to catch capture here. 5,800. Okay, so we're not doing that. Right, we are leaving this be and hoping that we do have comms when we get there. Okay, we have a lunar KTS ready, but that's going to cost a lot to roll out. So, 
Um, right now it's saying 1000, so I think it's already adjusted. Let me see. Yeah, okay, so it's calculated that right. I'll stay t still take them off the pad. No, nah, no, nah, we'll put them back on because we need to roll out eventually. Okay, but we can't roll out right now because it costs too much. Uh, why don't we take care of our series encounter first? Uh, we'll roll out, but we won't launch until after the series encounter. Oh, not that we have much of a choice. Um, rollout's gonna take 19 days, apparently. Um, staff? We've got a thousand. That's a long time. Guess it's all that Hydrolox? Not sure. Seems a lot longer than usual. Did our only administrator hate Hydrolox at all? I don't think we have more than 500 liters of solid propellant. Each of the Cybertrons is 200. Oh, but the... But the uh, launch escape system, hmm. But then that's integration speed, not the rollout and rollback. Yeah, but we might have to reconsider that with our missions having launch escape systems. We shouldn't have launch escape systems. He's clearly against it. Right? We'll have to think about that. I'll leave, I'll leave him be for now. It's a red line back, but it looks like it has a line back. That doesn't give much hope to the dual mission, though. I mean, dual mission to Jupiter. We already got some series science, I think. Yep, temperature scan already done. It doesn't say transmit science data from space near series has been checkmarked, though. Which is strange. 21% transmission. Well, 60 kilometers. Hopefully that's good enough for him. Okay. No particular charge problem. It's running mass spectrometry. That should be done by the time we get there. Yeah, the only data stored here is the mass spectrometry. Well, we'll see if that satisfies it. Okay, check mark that for mass spectrometry, but it did miss the thermometer and barometer because we weren't focused on the vessel while it transmitted that. Okay, we got flyby series because we got the 20,000 kilometer range, but we're getting much closer. I want to be close, but not too close. Okay, there it is. Not the best textures, but I guess we haven't gotten much of a glimpse of series. Where is low over series? Pretty darn low, like 500 kilometers. Out of comms. In comms. We're not going to get done with them. Okay, well, that's all we're going to get from this one. It's going out into interplanetary space. And who knows what happens after that. But its job is done. So let's go back to Space Center. We got a chunk of science. I think we'll proceed with the hydrolyze. I mean, we've got the RTG unlocking that I wanted. Oh, yeah, let's take a look at the tracking station. No, we don't have any new upgrade for that. Still tech level 5 on the comms there. So maybe... What we got here? Level 7 tracking station and COM level 6. But probably all the tracking station upgrade is going to do is let us use... I mean, it says increasing your DSN gain by 3 decibels. But I'm not too sure about that anymore. Um, it might just enable us to use this tech level. 56 for that, though, seems probably necessary. We've already tooled all the avionics that we're going to be using for now, so let's not touch that. Okay, but then better Hydrolox engines, because we've got extra configurations. Not, I mean, this large Hydrolox engine is useless, but we, we, don't, we aren't even planning on having any large Hydrolox engines. 
However, it's a little bit peculiar. Okay, we've got this 1968 Hydrolox engines and it doesn't say anything here, right? I mean, this is the only thing. But if we take a look at our RZ20, and suddenly the default music plays. There's nothing weird about KSP at all in this final version. <laughs> suddenly the music cues. Oh, and we have less Delta V than I was expecting for some reason. Okay, but if we take a look at the RZ20s, we've got this Mark II version that has 425 seconds of ISP, which is much better. When we hover over this Purchase 5000, it says 1968 Hydrolox engine, engines. But in the tech tree, it doesn't show this upgrade there, unlike all the up other upgrades. So, if we get 1968 Hydrolox engines, do we get that RZ20 upgrade or not? Doesn't pop up here either. It's, it's nowhere else. As far as the HM7, we only get an upgrade all the way out here. So, well, we've got the points. I guess we'll try. And maybe we'll get the 525, uh, sorry, 425 second ISP RZ20s. Maybe we won't. Okay, well, we've rolled out the Lunar KTS, but I think I'll start the next episode with its launch and see how that goes. And again, it'll be uncrewed, and we'll just see if how high it gets. Will it get to the moon? Will it just get high over the Earth? We'll find out. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.